Bert here with B&B Power Sports doing a video of a startup procedure on my antique Caterpillar RD6 three cylinder diesel with two cylinder gas pony motor I call it a pot motor he, other guys call them pony motors first machine I ever learned to run when I was a kid right here you got your pony motor you can see spark plugs on it this is a little two-cylinder gasoline motor you fire that up with a crank on the front here no that's a start no that's not at all on this thing come up here you crank it over you gotta mess with the choke and you gotta turn the fuel on first and blah blah blah, blah. undo this this is your what holds it at idle I have problems with the governor on this thing. It doesn't quite open it up enough, so I put an extra spring on here just to kind of help hold it open a bit more. Makes a little bit of difference. Higher RPMs. It's old. It's wore out. Also, this is something I'm just trying out for the first time. These. This is how you engage the gasoline motor to the diesel motor. Once you have it running and warming up, you pull this back. Let's take these off here. I'm going to see if this works because it's all wore out normally you would hold this back to slow it all down to stop it basically and then you pull this till it clicks which it doesn't always really click that's what I'm saying the linkages wore out and then you start pulling this slowly and this engages the clutch this is your pinion and this is a clutch fork and you go till this clicks supposedly it's supposed to hold and then it's supposed to turn over the diesel actually before you even do that you switch your decompression right now it's on run mode and down here is start mode so you decompress the diesel first and then you do this pr process and then you're supposed to let it sit for a couple minutes at least it depends how cold it is um, the exhaust from your putt motor runs through the intake for the diesel so it heats it up it heats up your intake air and basically the whole block eventually if you let it run long enough because also the coolant i believe also runs through it yes it does too it's a liquid cooled motor right here so the main coolant for the diesel runs through the pot motor also so the longer you let it run the warmer the diesel motor gets it's like glow plugs but even better actually now you hear stories from the old timers that used to run these things and they hated running them in the winter because the newer machines with the electric stars and whatever else wouldn't start in like minus 40 and shit they get a day off whereas these guys as long as that pop motor starts you can get them to start you let it sit and turn over and turn over and turn over for a good 20 minutes if you have to until the diesel's warm and it will start always it was actually an ingenious fucking system so anyways you get that turning over let it warm up for a bit then you come up here and you check these gauges this one right here is water temp and this is your oil pressure for the diesel so you come up and you check and you make sure your oil pressure is going up while it's turning over and these gauges work great and it, it does what it's supposed to do <coughs> once you know everything's good it's warmed up enough you flip on the diesel shutoff this is your main pump fuel shutoff set your idle wherever you want it i'm gonna put it up a little bit I'll set all that right now Ooh. then you come back down here and you flip the decompression off so the diesel is now getting full compression and in a perfect world it'll spit and sputter a couple times and then fire and as soon as it does this will automatically kick off it's supposed to anyways but if not just come over and jam these off make sure they're disconnected and then you got to turn off the little pup motor there's supposed to be a switch for your magneto right here but this one's not hooked up this kill switch i'm going to hook it up someday it has got on and off that's the only electronics in the entire thing is this little uh it's not called a magneto what the hell is it called again but anyways but the best way to actually do it is turn the fuel off up here on this valve then it just runs the carb right out of fuel there's no old gas left in it it just stalls out on its own you flip it back up to idle first you disengage this governor put it on idle and you just let it idle out until it runs out of fuel that's the proper way to do it sometimes i'll just choke it though i'll put my hand over and just whatever because i'm in a hurry but anyways i'm going to see if i can do this i'm 
because of these not working like they're supposed to the way it is right now because it's so wore out I have to stand here and hold those if I let go of them they disengage automatically uh, whether the diesel's firing or not so there's something in the linkage that I have to adjust on this over center thing doesn't work it doesn't stay tight you have to like physically hold it and this one you got to hold both of them otherwise it'll pop out it's kind of annoying so I'm gonna try this bungee cord trick <laughs> It's an experiment, so let's see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't take too many cranks to get the pup motor going. It usually doesn't. I got it tuned in pretty tuned up pretty good. I did take the carb off and cleaned it all out and went through the jets and all that crap. And let's see if I adjust this camera a little bit better. There we go. So, let's see what happens. So I want full choke. Out that way. Feel on this little butterfly valve here. This is a water separator for any gunk and water and moisture in the tank. It comes into here rather than running into the carb. Works pretty good actually. Uh, yeah, I got that open. That's all set and ready to go. Let's give it a shot. It worked really well. It was nice to be able to let go of that and go up top. Sometimes I need help somebody else to go up there.
that's how you start an ancient old pony motor diesel cap.